Welcome, really appreciate having you here. We're back again with another analysis video because this is my cat Leah Moscom and surprise, surprise. Well, I was surprised to even see any buds forming during some of the most volatile conditions this early spring that I've ever, ever witnessed here in Southern Spain. Thank you very much for being here. We are gonna discuss, go through a checklist as to what possibly could have gone wrong with the blooms or the lack thereof of my cat Lea Moscom. So let's begin with over and underwatering. Pretty much over or underwatering during the time frame when she was forming her buds was not an issue, seeing as the pot stayed damp for an extended period of time because I would flush regularly just to make sure nothing would stay stagnant in the pot. We can talk about improper lighting now. Now that could be a possibility. Improper lighting, seeing as I was not supplementing with any of the artificial lighting that I have at my disposal during these five, six weeks that were pretty bad and very, very dark. However, I'm gonna have to put a little bit of a, you know, side note on that because the buds continued to form during that time period. And if the lack of enough light would have factored in as an option, then I would would hedge my bet that the buds would have blasted during that time period. You see, this orchid's light requirements are like 50%. Because of the variegation and what it poses, you see, I've burned some of my variegation in the past, thinking she needs more light because of the variegation. That turns out not to be the case. So I'm a little bit iffy on the lighting and I will keep that definitely in mind for the next go around. The temperature fluctuations, not really. I would eliminate that possibility because this orchid can take temperatures down to 10 degrees Celsius and my grow space did not hit that low. The lowest temperature I had was 14 degrees Celsius, so thankfully, thankfully, she can tolerate 10 degrees Celsius, otherwise I would have also had to consider temperature fluctuations. Humidity highs and humidity lows, that is an option, especially being on the high side. I did not see any discoloration on the buds while they were forming. What you see now with the petals being discolored like that, those marks were not there while the buds were forming. It is a possibility, however, that during the time period of the buds developing, that it was a little bit too much humidity for the outer cell structure. And then once things were warming up, those cells had already suffered some damage. However, visually, I didn't see anything. It's just something I will have to take into consideration also for the next go around. Now we can also talk about pollutants. In this situation, pollutants didn't factor at all because by the time I recognized what was happening with one of my orchids when I had the gas heater on, I had stopped using the gas heater. Again, the buds were clean throughout the entire process of them developing. So I'm eliminating pollutants. No pests either. We can take that out of the equation. There was nothing on her. No mealybugs, no scale, no thrips, no pests. First time bloomer, definitely an option that I have to take into consideration. This is the first time my cat Leah Moscom has actually produced any buds since I've owned her. So that will definitely get a check mark behind it that this could be first time blooming woes. Nutrient deficiency. I am going to definitely give that a check mark as in a possibility because during the time frame that she was forming her buds, the weather was atrocious. I was so conservative with any kind of fertilizer, any kind of supplementation. And well, it definitely could be a factor. The location where this orchid was living while she was forming her buds was never switched. The fact that she formed buds during conditions that were not favorable as far as I could tell, tells me that her location wasn't the problem. Drafts? Nope. By the time she was starting to mature the buds and started to bloom out very, very slowly, there was no cold drafts coming in at all. By that time, the daytime temperatures had warmed up enough so we can eliminate that. But there's something I want to circle back on and that is nutrient deficiency. My cat Lea Moscom has probably got only dead roots in the pot. She is due for a repot and I like to repot my orchids every two years three years being the maximum if I can get away with it. And she has been here for two years. The shriveling of the pseudobulbs is showing me a very, very clear indicator that she does not have functioning roots in the pot, which means she cannot absorb nutrients even if I had provided them. And her functioning roots 
that are viable are around the surface, the edge of the pot, which mainly only got water when I flushed the pot through or sustained themselves and the orchid while we still had so high humidity in the air. So the lack of nutrients is a huge factor here because of the lack of roots. You can see how shriveled my pseudobulbs are. We are still on time to save this orchid, but it's literally five to 12 for this orchid to save her and make sure that she still has enough energy in her to be able to develop the eyes at the base, which will be paramount that they make it and produce a new root system. So between the two options of first time bloomer and no nutrients because of no roots, I strongly believe that this is why my Cattleya Moscom was not capable of blooming out and started to really fail. And you know what? It took such a long time for the buds to open even while they were showing white by the time the structure was trying to open it's like there was nothing left in her to be able to achieve that so what i'm doing now is i'm going to cut the spike and i'm going to hope that this orchid has enough energy to be able to develop the new eyes that she has at the bottom i cannot repot this orchid right now because she has no new roots growing and here's the thing People say, well, if you are in semi-hydro and LECA or self-watering or anything inorganic, it doesn't matter. You can repot at any time because the media isn't changing and the setup isn't changing. But I always say, don't go there just because you are using the same media. Any kind of movement of an orchid in a stressed situation like my Moscomb is, is another stress factor even if you're not changing the setup or the media. The best thing in situations like these is to leave the orchid alone and in my case now I'm going to have to be really really mindful to mist the viable roots that are circling around the pot right here. The moment she starts a new growth if she has the energy and I see root nubbins we are going to go in and we're going to clean up this pot and hopefully give her another good start. I have finally figured out how to take care of her so that she doesn't get burnt variegation. So it's been a learning curve with this orchid. And despite being a little bit disappointed that my blooms didn't actually really bloom out, well, I got a sneak peek of what's to come. Look at that cute little pink mark there on her column. So yeah, we got a little bit of a tease. That is fine. At least she has matured to the point where she could have bloomed properly. But she is so, so weak because of what's happening in the pot. Lack of fertilizer, lack of nutrition absorption, and possibly being a first time bloomer, all these things came together and we didn't get some beautiful Cattleya Moscom blooms. Now, I am not that disappointed. I've learned another thing about this orchid and I need to make sure on my repot that I do something about having her deep enough in the pot so that any new roots that grow will actually go into the media and not do the circling thing. There is potential in this orchid. She has enough storage organs left in the back. If she starts to absorb all of the ones that she has here, all the tiny ones, that's okay and we may need to wait another two years before we see some semblance of blooms again. But I hope by that time, myself will have really gotten to know this orchid properly, and then we can enjoy them the way we should be able to enjoy them. I hope that this video was helpful. I hope that if you ever find yourself in a similar situation and you have like blemishes and imperfections on your petals and sepals, then use the checklist Take a screenshot of the list so that in future you can always get back to it and do your own analysis. Personally, this has worked for me in the past and I hope it does for you too. Thank you very much for watching. I wish you a beautiful day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.